these are such incredible kind of sources of joy and happiness and I think being connected to nature has is, is been very healthy for me. Hello guys, welcome back to another Final Cut Pro tutorial. Today we're talking about a really exciting new pack from FCPX Full Access and that's Archive Photo Pro. So this right here is the timeline for the sequence you just watched. As you can see it's a really basic timeline and this is a drag and drop template pack which makes it so easy to use for anybody. This pack is going to allow you to drop your own custom images into these beautiful pre-animated film strips and photographic borders. So once you've downloaded Archive Photo Pro from FCPX Full Access you're going to install it as a title template. Then you're going to go, come up to the right hand side in Final Cut Pro, click these six boxes and on the left hand side you'll find Archive Photo Pro. If you've downloaded it as part of the Ultimate Bundle then that's going to be included in this huge list of plugins for Final Cut Pro. You're going to seriously supercharge your Final Cut Pro with the Ultimate Bundle so I highly recommend purchasing it as part of the bundle. But back to Archive Photo Pro. Once we click on this, you can see that we have 20 templates included in this awesome pack. And these 20 templates give you a choice of different frames and different pre-animated movements. For each animated movement, we have four different frames that we can use. And the plugin pack is also broken down by one drop zone and two drop zones. So in the one drop zone area, we have 16 templates which take one drop zone image. And in the two drop zones area, we have four templates that take two drop zones. Let's just start with number one here. So if I double click number one, it will drop it into our timeline and it'll be ready for us to edit. Number one is a basic animation where the photograph snaps in and then we slowly zoom into the image. And then we have a fade out at the end. So if we click on number one here, I'm going to come up to the right hand side and I'm going to make sure that T is selected and this will show us our published parameters so we can work on this plugin. Straight away you can see we have snap in and fade out checkboxes so we can choose whether we want this photo to snap in or fade out. If we deselect snap in that's going to remove the introduction animation to this plugin. And if we remove fade out that's going to remove the fade out at the end it will allow you to add your own custom animation or perhaps your own fade. But for now I will leave those both turned on. Our next category is scratch style and here we have a choice of five different scratches that we can use across this template. They're all very different and come with varying levels of severity. I'm going to choose scratches number one which is this really authentic aged photo scratch pack. If you're using a dark photo we then have the ability to choose scratches white and this is going to invert the colour of our scratches into white so they would show up more clearly on your dark photograph. But for this one I'm going to leave it black right now. We can also change the opacity of our scratches. We also have these filmic hair and dust filters which we can add or remove. These are really going to add some age to the film that you're making. As we come down to the next section we have a few check boxes. We have extra frames on and off and by checking this this is going to remove the photographs in the background. I personally really like these because they add depth to this frame. But of course if that's not your style you can just remove those. I'm going to leave them checked on. The cool thing about this pack is we can remove the background from any of the templates so we could have a custom background or we could have it playing over a film. Again, for the purposes of this tutorial I'll leave our background on. And you may have noticed that in that film there are intermittent brightness flashes. These give the template an aged feel which I think is really effective but of course if you so choose you can remove the brightness flashes. I will be leaving them on. So in order to change the image that we're working with we're just going to click here on our drop zone which is this empty box and then we come over to the left hand side and we click on the clapperboard icon. From here you just select the photograph that you want to use. I'm going to use this lovely photo of this little girl leading her llama and I'm going to click apply clip. So that drops the image straight into our drop zone. As you can see we might need to do a little bit of repositioning and this is really easy. Just below the drop zone section here you see we've got X pan and Y pan. If I drag Y pan to the left it's going to drag our image down so that we can see her face. If I wanted to change the size I could come to X scale and Y scale. Here I might type 80 and this is a top tip you're definitely going to want to mirror exactly whatever you put as X scale also in the Y scale. So if I have 80 in my X scale I will want 80 in my Y scale and that will keep our proportions of our image perfect. So now I've made it a little smaller it's a little bit too low for me so I'm going to bring it up a little bit and that looks really, really good. As we come down the plugin, you see we've got frame position, so we can also change the positioning of our main frame here if we wanted it to be slightly off center. I personally think center is really good. We can change the frame scale to be bigger or smaller. And of course we can change the frame rotation. 
As we come down to the bottom section here, we have our drop zone style, and these are really quick fixes for your photos to give them that perfect aged look. So we can choose for a black and white effect, for example, or perhaps an acid bath. We can desaturate, have a disposable effect, or we can add a sepia tone. This photo is actually a film scan, so it looks really authentic without any of that added, and I think that looks great. Let's see how it looks. Wow, that looks so professional. That took minutes, super easy to execute. That's really gonna add a professional element to our film. If we come back up to the top left and we click on the T, we can explore a little bit further in our pack. When we're in the one drop zone section, all of our controls are exactly the same as what I've just shown you, but our camera movement is different. If we come down to two drop zones, we're gonna have one extra choice of a drop zone. So I'm gonna drop this into our timeline and we can take a quick look at this. So if I click on the purple bar, I come up to the right hand side and you can see straight away I have the same choices. I can choose whether I want this to snap in or fade out. Let's say for this I actually want to untick both of those. Maybe I don't want to have it transition in and I don't want to have it transition out because I'm doing something myself. Maybe I'm making it fade myself or I'm using a transition pack. Again I can choose the scratch style. Let's choose scratch 3 here. And if I wanted to make those white I could but I think for the purpose of this I'm going to leave them as black. And let's really pump up the hairs and the dust on this one. So when we come down to the checkboxes, we have the same as we did before in the one drop zone section, but we now have one extra choice, and that is markings on off. And you can see how in this plugin, we have these hand-drawn markings. So we can turn those on or off. I think they add a great human element to this pack, and they really make your footage look really authentic, like you've genuinely scanned these in off a film roll. So I'm gonna leave those on. As we come down again, we get to our drop zone section and this is exactly the same as it was before. We just have two drop zones now. So if I click on the drop zone box here, I come over to the left hand side, I click on our clapperboard icon and I choose the image that I want to use. I've got this lovely picture of Yosemite here. So I click on the picture and I click apply clip. As you can see straight away, that's dropped it in perfectly into our frame. Then I come down to drop zone two. I do the same again. I click on the drop zone and I come over to the left hand side and I choose whatever I would like to add. Let's choose this portrait of this man and I click apply clip. So he might have come in a little larger than we wanted to into the frame. So I'm just gonna come down to X scale here and I might change it to 70% on the X scale. And of course, remember that we always want to mirror the Y scale to be exactly the same as the X scale. So I change that to 70% as well. And it keeps all of our ratios on this photo perfect. As with before, we can change the frame position or the frame scale. I personally like it exactly how it is right now. But this Yosemite photo on the left hand side, this is a digital photo and it looks a bit out of place on a camera reel like this. So I might choose to add one of these aging effects such as acid bath, black and white, desaturate. Desaturate looks really good on this. Or disposable or sepia. I think for this one I'm going to go with desaturate. I love the tones that that gives the photograph and it works really well next to the black and white. If I drag the frame scale down, you can see that this film strip actually has two photos on either side. And these are automatically populated with the content that you use, but we blur and we change those to grayscale. I think that really gives it the effect of there's more in this camera reel that we were going to look at. And it keeps your audience engrossed knowing that you captured more content. And finally, a small top tip on how to seamlessly transition between two of these plugins. So let's say you wanted to transition between number one and number six. Now all you want to do is drag number six over number one. And it doesn't necessarily matter where this happens. Then if you've downloaded the ultimate bundle, included in the ultimate bundle comes a free adjustment layer. This is also available as a solo plugin on our website. Just head to the free plugins section. So head to full access adjustment layer in your title section and drag the adjustment layer over these two plugins. Then I want you to drag it a bit shorter just so it goes over the section where they transition into one another. And with this adjustment layer selected, I want you to come over to the right hand side and click on these two square icons, which brings up your Final Cut Pro effects. Now this pack works really nicely with a pack that we make, which is called Film Burns. If you have the ultimate bundle, Film Burns is included in there. And in here you can see we've got a load of gorgeous film burns, perfect for using to transition from one clip to another. Film burn 10 is a really nice bright one, 
So with the adjustment layer selected, I'm just going to double click Film Burn 10, and that's now applied Film Burn 10 to our adjustment layer. Let's have a look how that looks straight away. That's really, really nice. And as you can see with film burns from the Ultimate Bundle, you have 23 different film burns to choose from. So there's endless possibilities with this and you just find the perfect film burn to match your project. So that's all for now, a really quick tutorial. This is a really easy pack to use, but I honestly think this adds so much value to your work and makes your storytelling so much stronger. Instead of just having cutaways to basic photographs, why not add a frame? Why not have hand-drawn animations? Why not have this incredible 3D camera movement? That adds such a professional dynamic to your project. As ever, we can't wait to see what you do with this pack. Stay creative and we'll see you in the next video.